Welcome to Taste Buds. I'm Deborah Eckerling, goal strategist, writer, and foodie. And today I'm speaking with Robbie Samuels, who is the author of Croissants vs. Bagels, which, believe it or not, is not a cookbook. So I'm really excited to dive into this. Robbie, welcome to Taste Buds. Thank you for having a creative approach to this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, and we were discussing before, so I am like your first food interview ever. Yeah. Awesome. I am so excited. Which is so, incredible considering I wrote this book in 2017 and the title is Croissants versus Bagels. But yeah. So first things first, why the food analogy and what is your book actually about? Well, the subtitle is uh, Strategic, Effective and Inclusive Networking at Conferences. And if you picture going into a networking event or a reception, people tend to stand in these tight clusters, these these shoulder to shoulder huddles that are impossible to break into, that's the bagel. If someone in that circle shifts their body language to make space for others to join, that's the croissant. So if you mentally approach going into an event thinking, I'm here to meet people, then you'll have a body language that is open, even one-on-one, -on -one, we could be standing with both our feet sort of just facing each other, or you could do that, but then I can just shift my body language and my feet a little bit, and a third person can join us. So it's just an awareness that we want to have open and receptive body language. And we want to look for the people who have that natural stance rather than trying to just hover around and try to get in. And if you want to visualize this, I did a whole TEDx talk, which is hate networking, stop bageling and be the croissant. You can go watch it at robbysamuels.com forward slash TEDx. And uh, I brought people on stage and everything else. So, so the analogy was just very sticky. I will tell you that my very first notes on this, I did use donuts and croissants. I found some very early notes. I'd probably let go of that within a few months. And I, I think about this because people who remember it sometimes misremember it as donuts. But I switched because we're rarely having to choose between donuts and croissants. That's not usually what's together. It's usually bagels and croissants. And also bagels are hard. And so the whole idea of being hard to break into, whereas, you know, donuts crumble the first touch. So uh, it, it was natural. But also I uh, was raised Jewish from New York. My my uh, talk was called Art of the Schmooze that I was using as a basis of this 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 uh, concept was being talked about. And so it just seemed like a, a better fit to talk about bagels and croissants. So I have to ask, which do you like better for eating? New York bagels, Montreal croissants. I haven't yet been to France. But the next best thing, right? From what I've been told, I, I haven't tasted better. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I think they're both good in a, in a sense of food. Um, and it really depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, croissants are super crumbly, so not great for networking, <laughs> uh, walking around eating a crumbly thing and licking your fingers. Um, and I thought of my recipe for you for later. It's going to have to do with bagels, actually. Well, but I think for I like open body language, it's a great analogy. It's sticky like jam. It rem it's memorable. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Well, and you think about also it's food and community, right? So yes. it's not just they go hand in hand, not just because it's a great analogy. And it is a great analogy, but it's because if you're enjoying food, in a community environment, it's got the quadruple entendre, right? I've had people, uh, I've been brought into like women's leadership conferences and summits, and they'll serve bagels and croissants. <laughs> and they think they're so clever. <laughs> Do you tell them that they're not? No, it is. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> For a very long time, on the very end of my bio, so I dated someone who the very bottom of her bio said, um, uh, I like pants. It was random. And then another person, we got the idea because it was another woman who said, I like, and it was a very particular shade of lipstick. So I ended my bio for years with, I love burritos. It was the very last sentence in my bio. I have to tell you, I, I spoke for 11 years before someone served burritos. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> like I'm telling you exactly what I want you to serve. But it just took so long <laughs> before someone took my cue. That that's just I have no words. That's hilarious. I don't know what uh, other interview this would come up in. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, my my LinkedIn is Coast Funny, which has nothing to do with 
anything other than that was my original portfolio site. And I can't bring myself to change my LinkedIn to get mm -hmm. rid of Coast Funny because it's got that that throwback. But now yeah. I kind of wish it was a food. Mm -hmm. You know? But anyway, I still love burritos in case anyone wants to send me a gift card. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, we, we, so what I was going to ask, what's your favorite food? Is that your absolute favorite food? Or I, just I, okay. Food I you once love? went to Mission District in San Francisco and I had this amazing burrito and I was there for like four days before a conference. And um, I spent the next four days trying to find that particular shop and I ate burritos. <laughs> for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of the four days. I don't know if I ever got back to the original place or not, but I ate a lot of really good burritos and I never got sick of them. So I think that is a hands down. Yes. I, I love burritos still. I don't and think I could eat pizza four days in a row, three times a day and like it still. So you know, you're right. A friend of mine once went to New York and was looking the same, th found this pizza joint, and I think had it for lunch and dinner for like three days in a row, yeah. which is so random. If you love food, you love food. So why do you, why do you love food? What is it about food that makes for such wonderful analogies? Mm. Well, I mean, food is nourishment. Uh, it's community connection. It's also memories. So when you asked me before the show started, like for a great recipe, some of the first ones that popped in my head were things that like I made, my mother taught me to make, or, you know, we had at a, a family celebration. I don't know those recipes off the top of my head, so can't share them easily. But that was like the first things that like popped in my head, right? And because when you, when you think about moments of time and, and cherished memories, it's usually a meal. I mean, the whole Jewish thing is they tried to kill us. We survived. Let's eat, right? So like there's, there's a context in which we bring people together. And for years, I hosted dinner gatherings, uh, sometimes because I was attending a conference, I would organize it. Sometimes I wasn't attending, but it was in my area and I would host it for speakers I knew coming in. Um, I hosted dinners for like the gathering. So for me, like meeting with people and gathering over a meal was a big part of my, my life, my professional networking. And then when the pandemic hit, I had to find new ways to do that online, which is how I ended up in the world of being you know, event design, you know, consultant and an executive Zoom producer. Um, but, you know, we, we're, this is a, this is not the same thing. We're not having the same experience. Uh, it's, it's not theatrical, it's cinematic now. Uh, we're in this little tiny box. Um, but I, I do have rules for, for, for Zoom. I say first date rules apply. If you would eat it in front of me on a first date, you can eat it in front of me on Zoom. So I don't know why we think we can't eat on Zoom. We go out for dinner for, for meetings, for business, business networking over meals. Like that's a very common occurrence. So like suddenly we put a, we put a screen between us and it's like, we can't eat in front of each other. Yeah, that is kind of bizarre. And I was going to ask you about the food rolls. So I love that you answer my question before I even asked mm. it. So what is your favorite food slash recipe? Because, you know, we're, we're, we're waiting anxiously okay. in a hunger like so hunger. i actually just saw this on instagram there's this guy who like watches people make like he watches like a TikTok and then he goes and tries to make it himself uh and he's really funny and i don't remember his name but this is one i was about to try and it's very easy you take a bagel and you you cut around the inside and squish it so that you make basically uh a moat so you 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 separate it so that so you don't take anything out. You just like make a little moat in the middle, and then you you uh, pour an egg, and you know egg cheese, any kind of meat you would want to have, and then you bake it. And I'm like waiting for the weekend to try this because it just sounds so good. Um, so I think anything that kind of reinvents something you're already like is kind of fun to try. It's so it's like egg on toast, but a bagel. And in the bagel. In the bagel. So every bite of the bagel has like this baked egg in. Yeah. And that sounds <laughs> I ate. See, I learned doing these interviews to eat before I have these conversations. I understand. And I'm, I'm hungry again. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your ideal like zoo? What is it the thing that you eat on Zoom that you would eat in front of other people? Do you do you have an apple? <laughs> I eat an apple like every day, usually uh, a little earlier than this, usually in the afternoon. Um, but I was on a panel. So I, you know, I'm not going to eat 
when being interviewed on a panel. But if I'm having a good call with a team member or a get to know you call, absolutely I'll eat an apple. If I want to be really dainty about it, I can slice it up, but I usually don't bother. Um, you know, cheeses, nuts. You know, I think anything, any quick finger food is fine. What you want to avoid is things like spaghetti and ribs or <laughs> popcorn, things that make you like suck your fingers afterwards. Like, no, you know, but even in person, you know, again, first date rules apply. So, you know, uh, sometimes I'm finishing my breakfast when I'm getting on my first call of the day. Like, and the thing is, I don't over apologize. I just sort of now go, oh, just finishing breakfast because that's happening. And sometimes you can actually schedule a meeting by saying, yeah, let's let's make this happen. You you know, it happens to be during my lunch. Feel free to bring some snack and we can have a little nosh together. Do you get like sad because someone's eating something that looks better than what you're eating or vice versa? <laughs> I'm sure it happens. <laughs> I can't think of a time it has. Yeah. It, and the question I was going to ask earlier is when does the burrito book come out and what is the burrito the analogy for? Mm. It's funny because there has been sort of an ongoing joke about some other, you know, other things. Someone asked me how does Bialy fit in, like always, that always seems to come up. My TEDx talk got picked up by NPR and NPR um, did a, interviewed me and it came out at the end of last year. And so that, that got a bigger reach than anything I've ever done, which also brought out the haters. I have to tell you, I got called an anti-Semite because I said that croissants were better. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the analogy was like That's lost. ridiculous. <laughs> the analogy was lost on them. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I have my bona fides. I'm a New York Jew by birth, you know, is who I was raised to be. So, um, so yeah, but then we're like, was, where's the reality come in? So it's just very funny how they always want you to expand things over and over again. Um, I, I, I think the analogy probably stands with bagels and croissants and I don't want it too overcomplicated or it won't be sticky and memorable anymore. Um, but I, I would love to create something with a burrito in it. I, I happen. I mean, this is a favorite food of mine. Now you, I really want to go get a burritos tonight for like dinner. <laughs> I, well, I feel, I feel vindicated. Turnabout is fair play. Yeah. You made me hungry. And now I have done the same for you. Well, isn't burrito mixing everything together and cooking it and eating it. And isn't that a symbol for community anyway? Mm, I love that. Yeah. I will say now that you mentioned it, that in that direction, I've always been a person who has, without concern, brought together people from all walks of my life. From high school, like I was friends with a wide swath of people, like all kinds of groups, all the cliques. And I would throw parties and people would connect who otherwise had no reason to meet. And that to me was really fulfilling. And to this day, it's a big part of how I think about, you know, building my own network is just like having enough shared value even though our identities are different, you know, what we're most concerned about in the world might be different, uh, what we're even working on or all that good stuff. But like we have enough shared value. And it's a very broad definition of that, that we we would welcome being in the same space and breathing each other's air. So I know that we need to have walls up, you know, between there are people who hate us. You know, there's a lot of this bad stuff out there. So, OK, let's not all be in the same room with those people. But I think we put too many fences up and the fences when. There's a lot of similarity, but we are arbitrarily drawing a line saying, you're you, we're this, you know, and separating. And I think we could do better to find ways to build community across those lines. And I think food is a great connector. For instance, right, is a dumpling in every culture. And like a great opening icebreaker question is from, you know, how you were raised and the, and the culture you were raised and your background and ethnicity and race, et cetera, like, What's a dumpling in your in your world? And to just explore what that looks like. I think that's just like a unifying thing. Like there's a lot of different kinds of dumplings. I, I, it feels like a really great uh, singles line. Hey, baby, what's your dumpling? <laughs> anyway, this has been so much fun talking with you about, about food, and bagels, yeah. croissants, burritos. And if you're listening or watching this and are hungry, we apologize. But not. I mean, but not. Buds, it's in the title. Where can people find out more about you and connect with you and learn more about croissants, bagels, bialis, burritos, etc.? Everything I do is all at my website, robbysamuels.com. My three books are there. My the NPR and TEDx talks that I mentioned and other articles. 
Um, I'm a business growth strategy coach. So you'll find out about that and my event design work all there. I do free events. You'll find it all there. So like basically go to RobbieSamuels.com. And if you want to connect, I'm all about LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a great way to find me and to follow my work. I post daily. So love for people to connect and write a note. Say you heard about me through your show and taste buds and tell me what recipe I should check out. I love it. Uh, anytime you can give food homework is, yeah. it's a good day. So any final food for thought? And I, I have to ask you my favorite question. I'm not quite sure it applies as much to, to you and what you do. So I'm going to adapt it. But what do you know now about bagels and croissants that you didn't know when you first went through this exploration? Yeah, I think that, you know, I didn't fully appreciate why the analogy was so strong when I first sort of settled on it. And it was after the NPR interview, an article came out uh, October of last year that, and, and I got all the weird haters who came out to like argue with me about why that was the analogy that I realized the strength of it and why it was so sticky and why people who couldn't remember, even if they couldn't remember it exactly, they still they remember the concept. So um, I think the fact that it's, it's a choice we've been faced with at a breakfast bar where we're like bagels or croissants, <laughs> like that's actually a thing that's happened and they are quantifiably different, but both delicious. And so it's, there's a memorable piece to that. And I, I think food analogies are something that maybe more entrepreneurs should look at and not to be too cutesy about it, but it's, if it's, if it's sticky, if it'll be memorable, if it helps people, I've had people come up to me years later, point at their feet to show me that they're standing like a croissant and say, look, 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 croissant, croissant. And that's how I knew early on, like this was a thing. And I wanted to keep, I mean, this is before the book and before the TEDx, I knew it was a thing. I would come back and here's a really interesting thing. Staff members who joined since I had last spoken to the organization understood the concept. It had been passed along to people who had joined after I had done the, done the talk. That, to me, anytime you have an idea that can, can be shared mouth to mouth, like word of mouth that way, unbelievable. I mean, that's, that's something I learned. It's just like the power of that kind of analogy. Word of mouth and word of mouth. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That, that's my food for thought. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, Robbie. And thank you all for tuning in to Taste Buds with Deb. Don't miss an episode. You can subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast channel. And you can go to jewishjournal.com to get recipes and read articles that go with each episode. And you can learn more at tastebudswithdeb.com. Until next time, whatever it is, enjoy your food. <laughs>